kiss it, alright? Alright, Mike, let's do this. Here we go. Hello and welcome to PTZ Optics Live. Today we're talking about the state of remote education. We are live not just on Facebook, YouTube, and LinkedIn, but we are also hosting an awesome Zoom conference that you guys can join. We email out the Zoom password to keep everything secure while we're live, and you can get that password at ptzoptics.com slash show. So excited for today's show. Got a lot of great guests from ed the education space, including a teacher from Rosemont College named Christine. Thank you for joining us. And then we also have Drake Finney from a uh, high school in Nevada, and he's going to be talking about his virtual classrooms. And then uh, we also have Julia Sherwin, who has been reading up on the topics and learning about that. We also have... Tristan, who is, did I say that right, Tristan? Uh, yes, you did. Tristan, who is the winner of our eSports scholarship. Uh, and if you've been following along, uh, I think it was two weeks ago, we had our eSports in education show. And um, we're just so excited to have a student here, as well as teachers, administrators, folks who are helping the educational space in general. So let's kick this off. Uh, right now. So thank you for joining everybody. Um, you can feel free to jump in at any time. And we're going to jump into the state of remote learning. By the way, wanted to mention I've got this really cool X keys for Zoom controller. So just I want to let all the teachers know we got some really cool tech to show off today. This is a controller for Zoom. So imagine having that at your desk, uh, making life easier. So I'm going to be Sharing that as well today, just a little little something to, to show off. All right, so the state of remote learning in education. It is quite a crazy time. Uh, other thing I wanted to let everyone know is uh, our webcams have been really popular and you could win a free one on our Facebook page if you want to go there and share uh, some pictures of your PTZ Optics cameras or your work from home space. So what's going on out there? Campus shutdowns have led to a surge in remote learning. And actually, a great uh, leader in the education space, Mark Milleron, said this. The crisis has laid bare the challenges of digital equity and the educational disruptions that students of all ages have faced this year and probably next year, too, are going to require some new approaches. And we'll see more transformation in the K through 12 and higher education spaces in the next five years than we did in the past 25 years. Something a lot of people have been saying is that the crisis is the mother of invention. And so that's I'm just kind of laying that out there. I don't know if we can show these statistics full screen, maybe. But here's this comes from, from the Digital Chronicle. Is that correct? The Education Chronicle, Julia? Is that, that where this comes from? <laughs> The Chronicle for Higher Education, which is, you know, very respected um, uh, publication, and, and they did this survey and found that, um, you know, some, some amazing uh, information about the state of remote learning. They, they surveyed uh, teachers and administrators. So, um, yeah, there, I can see it now. Hopefully everyone can see it in our Zoom as well. So this and is... Yeah, there's a lot of a lot of points to consider, you know, not everyone, although our Zoom audiences each week for PTZ Optics tend, tend to be pretty technically focused. And, you know, we do these um, streams each week and really highlight the cameras that we um, that we have available and showcase them with some of the technology um, that's compatible with those cameras. But, hey, let's face it, not all teachers and instructors came into this situation fully trained in the technology. So training in online teaching, um, the Chronicle for Higher Education found that, you know, that is one of the things that schools really wanted to invest in like 70% to help faculty members. So that's just, you know, I wanted to make sure we noted that because I don't come from a highly technical background. However, I was an adjunct instructor at one point uh, at Temple University. So, um, you know, we really do appreciate that not everyone's coming into the situation knowing all of these technologies, and um, that's that's recognized. 
Yeah, I totally agree. And uh, there's two types of, I think, critical training that um, educators need to be thinking about. This specifically is training for online teaching. Um, but another one that I do believe is really important as well is training for online communications. And I uh, wanted to share that I did write a book called The Online Meeting Survival Guide. Mike's got the newer copy here. And uh, with this, we're actually, this is totally free. You can get it at um, ptzoptics.com slash book. And it's, this is for online communication. So internally, teachers are using Zoom, and we'll talk a little bit about this, to do their faculty meetings and to meet with uh, folks you know, on their teams, not just students. Uh, so this totally goes over how to use Zoom effectively, how to use Google Meet, all the different technologies out there. So one training I think that's super important is uh, for teachers is obviously training on online teaching, but another you know complementary skill is training in online communications, which everyone right now um, can benefit from. So we actually decided to have a complete, uh, we're going to have a full day of education that we'll talk about soon that's totally free for online communications coming up called the Presence Summit, but I'm getting ahead of myself. 38% of administrators plan to invest in technology, including Wi-Fi, virtual courseware, and laptops for students. Uh, 36% are saying more sophisticated online course design. And uh, you know, there's a couple other smaller things here. So, so what has happened? So spring 2020 was a big moment of change because the change happened mid-semester. So, you know, Drake, I know Drake was telling us some interesting things from the governor uh, and of his state that were surprising and shocking. Uh, Drake, do you remember what we were talking about last time? Yeah, we talked about the fact that um, the governor released the statement about two weeks into the shutdown that grades could not go down. So the initial buy-in we had from the students on interacting with us and participating in the class, all of a sudden, a lot of them that were sitting at A's and B's went, well, I'm done. And it kind of ground a little bit of that learning to a halt because I lost a lot of my higher end students uh, that were helping out my lower ends. So that, and that is something that I think will be improved, I would hope, uh, in the fall semester, because, you know, this happened in a whirlwind, you know, now coming into the fall, you know, we have this whole summer to prepare and say what went wrong, what didn't went wrong, what do we need to invest in? So the fall is going to look a lot different, obviously. Um, and I think we can all kind of agree and agree to that. Um, everyone knows that COVID-19 completely shifted the in-person education to basically fully remote, and it had a massive worldwide implication. So higher education was affected, K through 12 was infected, you know, students were affected, teachers were affected. And some of the challenges uh, are just being ready for remote learning and access to technology and planning. Now, the advantages, there are some advantages, one of them being that uh, you have on-demand access without the fear of exposure to people during the pandemic. So some of the challenges, and this comes from the Chronicle of Higher Education. I don't know if, Julia, you want to, to cover this one, but... Um, there's some statistics here that are kind of eye-opening. Yeah, they were really eye-opening. And of course, you know, it really depended. Um, some of the uh, challenges was like, were like the access to technology and Wi-Fi um, with more than 60% of instructors saying that students' lack of access to these things were, were big challenges. Um, I know a lot of that had to do with what area of the country you were in or um, you know, maybe certain regions where in rural areas, um, Wi-Fi access is a little bit um, harder to, to get a stronger signal. So um, these were all interesting uh, observations. 37% uh, of instructors said they were challenged with technical obstacles and, and including um, being able to um, learn some of these uh, learning platforms. I know, for instance, you know, my daughter's high school, they're all incredibly talented instructors, but they were still struggling a little bit uh, learning about Zoom and um, some of the, uh, like the sharing technologies and things like that. 
And then, um, of course, like everyone, uh, more than 50% said they were challenged juggling work and personal needs. Um, you know, the lines were sort of blurred for all of us. I think that we can all agree that, you know, we were suddenly at home working and being at home and it was kind of maybe hard to, to draw the boundary a little bit there. Yeah. I completely agree. And we wanted to briefly mention you know, some of the things that we're doing as a company to help. Uh, we've worked with Indiana University of Pennsylvania, um, the Case Western Reserve University in Ohio, just a, a few to mention. There's case studies on our website about these. A really popular product we have is the HuddleCam HD Simple Track 2, which is an auto tracking camera for advanced lecture capture systems that are being put in all across the country. And um, they works really well with Zoom. It has a USB connection there, allowing professors the ability to bring in remote guests and class participants. And so we've been helping a lot with lecture capture um, and also yeah, and, you know, work from home. Sorry, go ahead, Julie. We, we have, and you know, we've been in this space prior to the pandemic, which has put us in a really unique position to kind of explain our journey um, with remote learning technologies and helping schools. And um, uh, we're so grateful that Christine from Rosemont is here today. She's a business professor at Rosemont College. And Christine, if you're willing to share a little bit about your um, experience, um, of course, prior to the pandemic with um, you know, the technologies that you're utilizing at Rosemont, we, we would really love to hear from you. And I'm sorry if I'm kind of messing up your presentation, Paul. A no, bit, no, but no, please. I just thought it was kind of a great time to to talk about, um, you know, because I've actually been uh, a guest in her classroom and, it, and it's really fabulous what they're doing. Thank you, Julia. I would love to share. Can you all hear me okay? Yes, mm -hmm. we hear you. Okay. Hi, yes. everyone. So it, these, are, these are great. I know that uh, Paul had said, do you have any pictures of you in your classrooms? And, you know, I started looking through photos and it's so fun to see them up here, uh, what I sent you. Um, so on the left, right, of, of my screen, you see um, me last fall. That was actually last October of 2019. Happy as a clam, teaching, writing on my whiteboard. You can see the pull-down projector, right, a projection screen. I had students, obviously. Um, Okay, so one of the students took that photo uh, and um, sent it to me. Um, and then that was the, the, what you have here is our last day of class. And you can see there, um, right in the middle of the screen at the bottom is the laptop computer, which was projecting onto the screen and the students gave a final presentation, uh, advertising class where they created a mock advertising campaign for Jamba Juice. But the interesting thing is ignorance is bliss or you know you don't you don't know what you don't know. And I, as I was saying, was just happy as a clam with this technology in this classroom. We were able to do what everything that I thought we needed to do. But fast forward, Rosemont College, we opened a beautiful new state-of-the-art community center building in January of 2020. I was so excited to have my classes there. I met Julia, what, four weeks into the semester. You were there to train our faculty on how to use this new equipment that was completely new to us. And I was telling you, Julia, way before any of us had any idea that we would go into lockdown, I was just telling you how learning and teaching is changing because of the technology. Even though these students, you can see they're engaged, my students were even more engaged and excited than I even knew that they could be simply because of how agile we could be. You know, we could obviously with the smart, smart boards, um, we didn't need this projector, right? We could just easily have anything we wanted on the board we had cameras that could uh, help us record anything that was going on in the classroom from the front of the room or the back of the room. And we were just starting to get to leverage and use this technology. And if you go back to that prior slide, um, you know, I love social media and that was a Snapchat that I took um, 
new classroom vibes. You know, it was like one of my first days in January in that new classroom, um, being so excited to be using that technology. So uh, we were only just starting to get used to that in classroom technology when we left our classrooms and our entire campus on March 13th. And then we learned about a whole new slate of technology, you know, uh, leveraging our laptops and Zoom and a big blue button and Microsoft Teams, Google Hangouts, and all of that. So I guess that's my story. Well, thank you so much for sharing. And uh, it's, it's, it's really a great opportunity to talk about the virtual classroom. So you've transitioned to this virtual classroom. Drake uh, is here as well, but uh, I'd love to hear from you too as, as well, Christine, about this transition to the virtual classroom. Uh, you're in the higher education level. Drake, Drake is in the um, is in the K through 12 level. And, um, it's been a change for everybody. Uh, can you explain to us a little bit about, you talked a little bit about, you know, this transition to zoom, how, how, what was it like? And, you know, what were the good and the bad? Did you want me to go first? Sure. Um, I think the virtual classroom for me is mostly our online learning platform, which is Canvas. You know, I consider that our virtual classroom. um, That's, you know, a lot of schools have different um, Moodle or desire to learn Blackboard. And the Zoom or whatever video conferencing system you use is really just uh, a tool, one tool inside your virtual classroom. And I think what I heard was that so many people did it differently. Some instructors were actually trying to do the same thing via a video conference that they had been doing inside a regular physical classroom, lecture or teach in that way. And I did more asynchronous learning with um, every week, uh, like a, a video conference where we could ask questions and chat. They didn't really try to lecture or teach. It was more time to share what we were learning. Um, But, you know, what I did notice was that within the higher education space, especially initially when we all pivoted to online, everyone was doing something differently. And I think the big change this fall will be that we will now be ready, as you said earlier, with how we would like to use the technology to best create a learning environment. I want to hear what Drake saw in the, in the K through 12 level. Uh, in the K through 12, 12 level, um, we saw a huge change of things as they went through. Uh, having my initial life before I came back to education, being in radio and also in streaming sports, I had a little bit of a jump on the curve. Um, but we had a huge gambit of teachers that understood how to do a virtual set and interact with the students on Zoom to ones that were just trying to do a video recording and put it up for the students. At, from high school, we had a huge gambit. And what I noticed in my time with it is every week, I would start incorporating something else because I realized this was missing from my teaching classroom because do it, being math, um, it's great on lecture at times, but you've got to actually get a pencil on paper and, you know, do it in front of them and have them work it out with you. So you know, a lot of it was incorporating something new. So as we go into the next year and fall, um, and I'm hearing whispers from the government and the admin that there's going to be a virtual element. Um, my desk is getting bigger and bigger with different cameras, dot cams, things I'm importing in. Uh, just so I can hit every student at different levels. Um, Because some you can talk and they pick it up right away. Others, you've got to put the pen and paper in front of them and still do step by step. And Drake, you've got some great uh, pictures here I wanted to share. You know, you're one of those power users, I have to say, that is using (laughs) green screens. You're using virtual sets, uh, which is something that I think is really advanced in many ways. so tell us a little bit about this picture really quickly. Just uh, what, what, what's going on here? 
in that picture, that was the very first uh, video conference I sent out to the kids on Google Classroom as they were getting hit with all the questions of what exactly they were doing. <laughs> and for some for some reason, the students in here, because I do the, ver the do the streaming and all that, think I'm enormously wealthy. Um, <laughs> and I'm like, it's a teacher salary, guys. So I threw this virtual setup from vMix that had the big scene drop and all that just to get their attention because a lot of them, the first email was, where are you? What city is that? Aren't you in Havasu anymore? And I'm like, yeah, guys, the screen's in the classroom. So, you know, it was just, it, it met them to get them to engage me because I knew if I just did the simple, uh, you know, I'm, I'm competing against YouTube and Snapchat and things like mm -hmm. that, not only when I'm in the classroom, but now virtually. So I had to go big or go home, you know, and I just love that one because they could see the reflection of the studio lights in the windows and you know, I just had to kind of reach out and grab them. I love it. And it makes so much sense. Um, this is a obviously a vMix virtual set. I know a little bit more about that. Uh, we don't need to go into everything, but it looks amazing. And then this right here, I believe, is you um, showing a pic. Is this a, a hover cam? I've heard of these. This is like a document camera, right? Yeah, this is the doc cam that I had in my classroom. I, I snuck at home. And um, we are doing life insurance in term with the kids. And that's one of those subjects, like I said, just explaining it was not going to reach some of my students. So I invited them to a special class meeting and we went over the worksheet. And it's one that I had to take pencil to paper, just like I would have in the classroom and go step by step, which had a lot of success and a lot of a larger turnout than just some of my lectures. So I was very excited about that. Yeah, I, I know what it's like, trust me, you know, uh, even here and we're, we're, we're in an education space in a way here, you know, we try to educate folks in our studio and here we are, uh, there's Mike and his setup here, you know, and I like to be able to show different things and, and I like to put pen to paper and I like to get physical with it. And I really like that you're showing how to use the document camera because it makes so much sense. Um, well, and everything just married together so well. This was um, my seniors and juniors. We were doing the stock market when everything went south, which I regret to say was a blessing because this was the first time I could actually show a real life natural disaster and what it does to the stock market. Because usually they'll buy the typical Amazon, Microsoft, Disney, and they'll make money and they'll be happy. This one shook things up. Um, so it was one another one of those meetings that I called the kids to and we interacted where we were looking at exactly what was happening to everyone's stock because up until March, they were cakewalking it going, Psh, we'll stay in the green without a problem. <laughs> I love that. And it's so funny because Michael over here, uh, my producer is just giggling over here because he loves to trade stocks and it's just so funny. <laughs> Uh, to think of the students not in the cakewalk anymore. None of us are in the cakewalk. Nobody's get to cakewalk anymore, right? No, and, and that, that's the thing because on the line for this competition, and I actually have had emails going, when do we get it? And I said, when I can find you guys, um, the top three in each class got um, two large pizzas from Domino's, movie passes, and a brand new car. And the brand new car was actually donated by the car dealership that was local, but it was a Hot Wheels with their logo on it. <laughs> so they're all they and they want the car the most you know forget the pizza in the movies because they can't really use that right now but you know so this this turned it into that now there was a fight because now they're doing a little more level of thinking and you know how exactly are we going to get out of the red because the big ones that they're used to took a hit oh that's so great and i'm such a believer of friendly casual competition uh, we're hosting this uh, present summit coming soon, and there's going to be some casual polling and things of that nature. I see this here. Uh, this looks like some Google information. Is that is that a Google doc yeah. or this is this is Google Classroom? Um, I'd already set this up previous in the year. I love it because the students interact to it, and instead of getting 180 papers, I just get 180 email notifications and go and check it. Um, and this was when you first went back to really using it for that interaction. And I was talking to him about, you know, don't forget to check the PowerPoints, the document, all that built into it. Um, so it was reminding them that this is where our main platform for interacting was going to be. 
That is, is and, and tell us a little bit about Google Classroom, because it seems like that Google Classroom is really coming in to save the day right now, because it was in place, you know, many educators knew kind of what it does, how they're supposed to use it, and you already had this ready. I had it ready, and the nice thing, I, I did it because it was a great way to interact with the students and get that, um, because if I was already home or I was at a sporting event streaming and I got a question, I could instantly respond to it instead of waiting till the next day when the question could have been forgotten. Um, so it got that interaction. I actually learned it from a gentleman by the name of Mr. Cook. Um, he was my daughter's teacher years before I came back and I saw how they interacted and I thought it was great. Um, it's got a place, of course, for the stream as you see there where it actually lines up everything per day, but also has a section for the classwork where they just can go and find the assignment. Um, people, of course, is the students in there as well as some parents. And then it's got an area where you can set up your grade book, which I liked it because with the system we use at school, after I put it into Google on Friday, I just import everything over to the grade book for the school system. And it saved a lot of time. Um, but I really like Google Classroom for that interaction that the students knew that even at an undecent hour, because sometimes I got questions at three in the morning because their assignment was due at eight in the morning, um, that I could respond to them. So it, it gave them somewhere to touch and get in, get in touch with me besides just my office hours, which were 2.30 to 3.30 p.m. That is so cool. And, and I know that so many teachers are using that. Um, well, we have a couple questions in the chat, and then I don't know, is, is Michael Hetherington here today? There he is. He's here. Hey, Michael. I'm pushing my unmute button on my X keys. So we're going to open this whole, um, this whole presentation up to the chat in a moment. Michael, I want to get into this amazing X keys controller with you in just a second. Let's make sure while we have Christine and Drake here. Um, and then I, Tristan, I also have to introduce you. Um, well, I guess we kind of did your introduction, Tristan, but I want to hear from you, Tristan. Um, got a couple quick questions. Cause when we, when we dig into this X keys controller, the, the chat's going to go crazy. So let's just cover a couple things here. Um, here we go. Let's see. So my question says Claire Peters. Claire Peters is saying, my question is, how is remote teaching situation changing student engagement and also student evaluations? I don't know if, if anyone here could, could speak to that. Um, I can speak to it. Uh, one of the things about changing student engagement is my uh, silent wallflowers in the back of the classroom that sometimes were afraid to engage and do a discussion because they didn't want to, you know, as they say, quote, look stupid. Now, all of a sudden, we're sending me emails and a couple of them came actually while I was in class, but I was able to quietly just reply to the answer and all of that. So the interactions happening a lot more. Um, and the other thing about student evaluations, especially with Google Classroom, um, it's now a click of a button and I can have them the results immediately to them right away and we can find out any problems or any things that we need to reteach, you know, within a matter of minutes, as opposed to going home and grading 180 papers and then going to them the next day. Wow. Let's see what else we have here. Did Christine have something to share too? I would say the change is the um, a wealth of asynchronous learning opportunities so students can access as drake said the all of the classroom materials the assignments readings as often as they'd like to they can re-watch video lectures because it's you know all there in the in the online classroom so i think suit i i looked at the student time how much time they had logged in to the le online learning system, which is what we use is very similar to Google Classroom. And I was noticing, I actually thought it was so interesting that I went and compared it to the same course last spring. Um, it's interesting, some students spent a great deal of time in there. And it, that showed me that they were engaged in the various lectures and assignments, readings and all of that. So I think that's a, a 
to answer that question, how is it changing? It's giving students more. Yeah, I actually had a mom one time, and I've forgotten about this, that sent me an email. She busted her kid at the dinner table for playing with his phone. And we've known each other for many years. And she goes, and he shows me, and it was your math lecture. <laughs> and I went, wow. I'm like, that's kind of cool. So It's a great story. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, okay. So um, another question coming from Claire Peters, and he, he is, you know, expressing some concern over, um, you know, he works at a large university in Alberta, Canada, and it's going to be almost fully online. And, um, you know, he said it's going to put some of their instructors at, at a significant disadvantage because they have to modify and recreate their classes for a completely different environment than they're used to. I think we, we're going we're gonna to touch on that, uh, but I think the, the next thing to go to right now is I want to show this off because it kind of is a good segue. And, and Michael Hetherington, I'm going to pin your video here. Michael has been talking about trying to help teachers come up with a better solution for their teach from home. So you talk about work from home and then there's teach from home. And Michael came up with this. It's a two monitor setup here. There's a laptop, there's a screen, and then there's a, a keyboard and mouse, a uh, webcam, and then this uh, X key zoom controller. And, and Michael, can you talk us through this, this scenario that you've kind of uh, pioneered? And Michael's a doctor, um, or sorry, I should say he has a PhD. Um, and he came up with this, actually a little bit of a report on what he thought was the best setup. Uh, yeah, so you forgot to mention the absolute most important part of this, which is number five, the box. The uh, box. You, so you can set your second monitor above your laptop monitor. We'll get that in a second. So, you know, I, I deeply res respect or whatever the teachers who suddenly had to go home and teach because I suddenly had to go home and run my entire business from my living room. And I have in our office, I have a, a live streaming studio. I've made equipment uh, for the uh, major television studios all over the world. I've known PDZ Optics from our NAB world for years, and it was still a challenge for me. So I, I deeply respect anybody who hadn't thought about it and then suddenly had to do it. So. Uh, after two months, we learned a lot about what seemed to work better and some of the little subtleties of just making sure that your eyes are on the camera uh, were, I felt, very important. Here's the thing. You're so used to seeing the national news where they're looking through a teleprompter where their eyes are perfectly focused on you. But if I've got my second monitor over here, which I used to have, I'm talking to you like this, and, and it seemed very disrespectful that I'm look, not looking at you, right? So when we're lecturing in class, I look down at my podium and I look up. So the way that I have this set up is that I have my laptop has my data, whatever I'm going to be talking about, my, my documents, which I can switch to. But my Zoom meeting or, or my te uh, whatever telecommunication meeting I'm using is up above. So I can look up to you and I can look down. And, and honestly, strangely, after uh, those little subtleties meant something to, to my employees and to me. When I saw my employees not looking at me, they say, why aren't you paying attention? I mean, it used to drive me nuts when my kids would look at their phone, right? How many times do you want to just slap your little students for watching, looking at their phone when they should be looking at you? Well, this time they're actually looking at your assignment, which is over there, you know, so you can't be mad about it. Just like you said, when you caught them using the phone and looking at their phone. Um, so I think the most important thing I discovered was the box, number five piece there. Uh, just kidding. Um, so one of the things, you know, we've made these control keyboards for years uh, for all sorts of things. Uh, and... Yeah, they were supposed to be originally designed for user programmable keyboards, but they found their way into live broadcasts and all sorts of things. So you suddenly became a live broadcaster as a teacher. Well, that's interesting because you, you never you never bought into that in the beginning. <laughs> so we always we find that if you you know, if you're looking down like this and, and looking for your, your mouse, 
it's very fatiguing all day long to, to run your meeting that way. If you have a few buttons under your left hand that you can control, it just makes it that much easier. Certainly you can do there it with go. a mouse, but if you're, if it's a, you know, you're working all day long, like, um, like we're going to have to be, um, those buttons are, are convenient. So I could go on a lot about our products, oh. but uh, there it is. In fact, he's missing a label, but cute. Anyway. I'm missing one label. Um, now, so what I'm going to do, I'm just thinking about this. If you want to pin the video uh, in your Zoom session, it may be beneficial to you because I can't spotlight it the way I have this set up. But if you want to pin that video to see it full screen, this is going to be a live demo. So this little controller right here is going to start changing stuff in Zoom. So for example, uh, I, can do, I can start Zoom. I can show the desktop. I can do volume up and down. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and just start a recording. Boom. You can see that the recording's there. I'm going to pause the recording. So it's just so nice to have this when you're a teacher and you just have everything. Like, for example, show the control bar. Don't show the control bar. You know, um, I'm not going to leave the meeting, but I'm going to go from gallery view to speaker view. Um, there's something called show people, and that pulls up the participants uh, button there so you can see everybody. Uh, yeah, Paul, we were going to call that show parts, but then, you know, because I could fit that on the key, but I felt that showing parts would be inappropriate. So we went to people. <laughs> Here I'm uh, able to just toggle my video. So you can see that little video button going off and on there um, for my second computer that's connected to this. There's a uh, full screen mode. Mike's showing a side by side here. And um, it's really just, it's simple, it's easy. Um, it costs about $150. It plugs in via USB. And I have to say, my hat's off to you, Michael. I think a lot of people are, are excited about this. Well, we did that, in, and this was all done from our home, and we suddenly realized we had to do it. Uh, yeah, we make these kind of keyboards, again, for all sorts of things. So we made a kit, so to speak, that you could just download because everything had to be done virtually. We, were, we could not ship anything new to Amazon or to anywhere. We were totally shut down for various reasons. Uh, Amazon just wasn't accepting any new products. So we had to make a digital kit. So we, you use that, which you download the software. It put all the macros in there for you and then made you a little PDF file that you can just cut out with a pair of scissors. We plan on having that a little more professionally ready to go, but that also works. The price will be the same. So we'd like to have the legends pre-made for you, but we did have to obligate you to use your printer, and I apologize. No, do not apologize for that. You're working under incredible circumstances. Um, and we have this... a question in the chat, Paul, if I, if I can interrupt. Yeah, please, please. Um, Deb wanted, wanted to know if it was compatible with both Mac and PC. Yes, we have, uh, we have, at this moment, we didn't have the converter for, for Mac, but they, because it runs on keystrokes, it runs on Mac. So yes, we have a Mac version and a PC version. They're sadly not exactly the same keystrokes because it's a Mac, of course. And so there's a slightly different file. So if you got it from us directly, uh, we would be able to send you out the preloaded Mac version. Um, but if you had access to Windows PC anywhere and you could just push the go button, you would select the Mac version and say, initialize or whatever what program it, that's where it scares people uh, into the Mac version. So yes, uh, in fact, that was a challenge for this one is why we use pure keystrokes and, and no deeper uh, USB tricks to, to work with this one. And the ever important question, how do we get one? <laughs> uh, well, xkeys.com will get you to, to so here's the thing, I, I'm in trouble because I'm not a marketing person, I'm just an engineer, you know how that is. Uh, so I don't remember the exact website, but if you go XT's got time, you search Zoom XT's, that will get you there. Uh, it will at least get you the, the, the kits and things. It will say that the actual version is sold out because we don't, we haven't gotten them into production. Our printer house and things are just opening up. Uh, but what Paul has will be immediately available and the software is available. And then we'll probably be refining it with, with feedback. So it's so easy to make our changes to our, our shortcuts and things. So. I'd love as many people want to try it who can, and then uh, you know we're always able to help you out. And you can move the commands and reprogram yourself too, which is something we don't want to. Uh, sometimes we scare people. Program your own keyboard. Well, no, no. Start with what we give you, and then change it if you don't like it. So thank you for asking. Yeah, sure. I just put the link in the chat for our Zoom audience, and um, that link, I guess, uh, Mike can put it on the YouTube. 
channel? Yeah, I, I, I tossed it in the chat room so everyone can get to that. Uh, you can see here I'm cutting out the keys uh, from the printer. And yeah, it, you can you can do that right away. So I uh, wanted to share that. There's also a couple other things in our presentation um, coming up here. Let's see. Let's get rid of this. Um, I recently published a book called The Online Meeting Survival Guide. So I wanted to make sure everyone knows that's totally free. So if you've been thrust into online meetings, uh, whether it's Microsoft Teams, Skype, uh, Google Hangouts, Google Meet, Zoom, there, this is a great book, not just for, um, you know, learning the, the ins and outs, because there's a technical chapter on Zoom and all these platforms, but also just being more productive. Um, and this book has really been helpful for that. Uh, I've been getting a lot of great feedback. It's actually the number one new release in running uh, business meetings and presentations on Amazon right now. So I'm really proud about that. Um, you can get it totally for free. And if you have any questions, we're going to go to Q&A here. I see a lot of questions in the chat. But I wanted to also mention that with the launch of this book, The Online Meeting Survival Guide, we've also, we're also doing a full day of free professional development for online communications. And it's called The Presence Summit. And we've actually partnered with Zoom and Starin and a few other like CDW, uh, really great technology providers who are going to help us determine and, and help kind of learn how to be better online communicators. So we uh, have two really big name keynote speakers. One is Joseph Pine, the author of The Experience Economy. And he's going to help us understand how we can reinvent the experiences that we used to have in the classroom, that we used to have in a conference room or, or an office space, and bring them to video communication. So it's going to be a thought leadership forum. Fatima Doman, who, Julia, I don't know if you want to say a few words about Fatima, but Julia actually knew and interviewed Fatima in her radio days as a radio host. And uh, Fatima is going to help us kind of interact and unpack with collaboration and online learning and kind of finding our strengths as online com as communicators and how we can translate them to online communications. Yeah, yeah. Fatima Doman founded AuthenticStrengths.com and um, she's a, a businesswoman and an author and she really uh, is like a positive psychology expert. So um, if anything has shown us these last couple of months is um, we need to be resilient now more than ever. So I think um, most of us will find uh, Fatima's uh, talk very relevant and, um, you know, she's just really a pleasure to listen to. She's so insightful. Her book, Authentic Resilience, is absolutely moving. She comes from an uh, interesting background where uh, she's been able to be resilient throughout her whole life. Um, and then, of course, I'll be drawing from the Online Meeting Survival Guide. There's two tracks to this event. Oh, and by the way, uh, speaking of hooking up your classroom and your work from home space, on PresenceSummit.com, you can enter to win a PTZ Optics USB camera for your classroom and an upgraded HuddleCam HD Pro, which is our new kind of professional webcam. We didn't get to talk a lot about today. You can check it out at HuddleCamHD.com. But this is a new 4K webcam that comes with a remote control for Pan, Tilt, Zoom. So it's a really cool new webcam. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it, but you could win one for your work from home space. And we're just really excited about showing people kind of behind the scenes of how we do what we do at our studio. And uh, that's our presentation, folks. But definitely check out present, uh, PresenceSummit.com because uh, you can get a free ticket to watch the show July 15th. And... Um, there's Zoom breakout sessions with some really great leaders. We're also going to have uh, G-Love as our main musical performance. So it's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, it's going to be a great day. And um, thank you so much for, for, for joining us. You know, we're going to continue to talk about um, education, the state of remote learning um, over at least, you know, for next week. Uh, we for have a sure. giveaway too. We'll probably continue to uh, throughout the rest of the summer, right, Paul? 
that is right. We're going to continue uh, with this the rest of the summer. I also wanted to do two more things before we wrap up. One is we have a giveaway. So if you guys are hanging out for the giveaway, don't forget. We did not forget. We've got some questions to answer. And then finally, I wanted to open this up for Q&A for everybody. And Tristan, I don't know if, if you could, you know, Tristan is, is our, the winner of our eSports um, scholarship. He's really been very exciting. I want to thank you for your um, essay that you sent over. Did you want to talk a little bit about um, what it's like to be a student in this space where you're uh, having to do a lot of remote learning and, and what's your perspective? Well, in my perspective with remote learning, I'm totally sorry if the audio is awful in this case. With my perspective in remote learning, I would have to say it was really sort of challenging. You had assignments that are due on deadlines like Thursday or Friday, but they're also very easy. So if you don't complete your assignments on time, I think it would pile up and you won't get it done. So one thing that I think online learning could be useful for in the future is, as well as teach communication, just giving students assignments that are easy to understand and easy to complete while also giving them the information that they need to learn all these new topics because with this COVID situation, we can't really meet face to face nowadays. And that's going to cause a lot of teachers to either A, transition to online learning completely or B, hand out packets. So I think better communication between teachers and students would be helpful during this time. Thank you for that. I think that's, that's a great, that's... it's a great point. And I'll just um, chime in as a parent, you know, there, I think going forward, the proper balance between utilizing things like Google Classroom, having some Zoom face-to-face -face instruction and, and having a little bit more of a balance because I felt like at least on the elementary level for my children, they just got slammed with a lot more assignments. So it was like a lot more homework. But I think what was really critical when we were all in that quarantine phase is that engagement that you do get through Zoom and through conversations. And I think that's really critical. And some students really need that more than others. So that's my two cents. So I'm going to start pulling winners for our giveaway. The first person is Kevin Lewis. Uh, let us know if you're here either in Zoom or online and you have to claim your prize. So I'm going to pick a new winner as well. And is there anyone in our Zoom panel that has some thoughts that they'd like to share? Uh, the floor is open. Richard Gindritz is our next winner. Excuse me. I, I would like to share something. Um, I have a company. We teach music production and cinematography to um, middle school and high school kids. And it, basically, our program was in, in the schools. We basically take the equipment in and do it as an after suit after school program or we do summer camps at different universities here in North Carolina. Uh, we had to completely, everything got canceled. We had to completely go online. Uh, we had planned to have an online class starting next year. So it made us ramp up and do this this year. So what, what our major problem was, was first of all, com, um, changing our classes and learning how to get the same outcomes that we get in the face-to-face -face class. Because we first started doing, that first week we started classes online and we did them for free um, just because we needed to practice. But um, we tried to do them like we do it in person and uh, it doesn't work like that. So we had to totally change up the way that we do. But we now have the same outcomes, but we're doing, we have to do the classes totally different. We did find online DAWs because uh, we use, you know, um, DAWs. Mm -hmm. um, um, so we found online DAWs. We found online uh, like We Video, Soundtrap, Band Lab, these type um, software. So We Video is an NLE that's online and 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 it's good for teaching. And we had to make sure that they were they were um, secure for kids. So that was the other thing, <laughs> you know. So they had to be COPA compliant and stuff and things of that nature, which I'm quite sure everybody's familiar with. So uh, we went through this iteration and, and it's doing well now, believe it or not, we got some of our summer camps back. 
So they, now that we're doing it online, they saw us doing it online. So now we got some of the summer camps back, which is a great thing. But um, we also had a, have an office that we're getting ready to get in headquarters, which totally has changed. And I've been looking at PTZ cameras and I was looking at PTC optics. I think one of the salespeople had called me like a, like two months before <laughs> before the uh, uh, before this uh, shut in. So we'll pick that we'll pick that conversation back up again. Cool. Yeah, that that's you know everyone has a unique story um, with this because we have all had to adapt and try to learn uh, how to how to do online communications. Um, you may be interested in our presence summit um, because it's going to be a lot of great tips on, um, you know, we could go through the list, but check out presencesummit.com because uh, we have speakers from Zoom. They're going to be talking about, you know, body language and the importance of showing video so that you can pick up on, you know, 90% of communication is nonverbal. Um, so how can we cross these digital barriers and try to make communications more effective? Um, so thank you for sharing that. I'm going to pull a couple more winners and then we're just going to, it doesn't seem like we're getting any. Uh, we'll just roll it over to next week. Um, but let us know if you're waiting for the giveaway every Wednesday. We try to do a giveaway and I'm putting the names in the chat here. Uh, but it looks like we can uh, roll it over to next week. So thank you everybody for watching. It's been so fun. Is there anybody else who didn't get a chance to say something in the Zoom chat? Um, or did we miss any questions in the Zoom chat that we should cover? Can I say one thing as we break? Yeah. Christine, thinking about fall with higher education here in Pennsylvania, the key words I think have to be hybrid and flexible. We have the PTZ cameras in our classrooms and some students will not be able to come back to class because you know we, are, we will be in the green phase. So we will be on campus in our classrooms, but some people, faculty, students will because of concerns with coronavirus and infection will not be able to be there, but we will be able to video conference them in. So hybrid and flexible, I think are the key words that we're all looking at and this type of information you're providing helps us to do that. So thank you. It's definitely my pleasure. You know, there was a slide that we kind of skipped uh, a little bit over, but Westchester University, we're here in downtown Westchester. Uh, they, they announced their whole guidelines and I'm sure similar guidelines are coming out all across the country, but all the students must wear face masks. All the faculty members must wear face masks. The, um, in uh, basically the, the teacher after hours, I guess they're called, uh, you know, office hours are all virtual. Everything's over Zoom. Uh, all faculty meetings are over Zoom. Um, there's a whole list of things that they've also they're starting a little bit earlier in August. And then they're doing a, an entire hybrid approach from the get go where, you know, it's in person starting in, at the end of August. And then by November 30th, it goes straight to all virtual. So it's planned, which I do think is smart because now we're saying, hey, look, prepare. This is going to happen. We're, it, it is hybrid from day one. So I think you're right on with that, Christine. Thanks. I have all a right. question. How can we yeah. get in touch with you, Paul? Uh, my email address is paul.richards at ptzoptics.com. Uh, feel free to send me an email. I might not be the right person at our organization. And if not, I will point you to the right person. But I'm always happy to bounce questions off and uh, be, be there. I'll put that in the chat too for you. Thank you so much, everybody. We really hope Thanks, that everyone. some of you get the ch chance. Oh yeah, congratulations, Tristan. You're right, Julia. Yeah. Congratulations, Tristan. Thank you very much. I enjoyed, Good luck. I enjoyed this cool. conversation very much. Great. Thanks, Christine. And thanks, Drake. Thanks, as always. everybody. Thank you, Drake, as always. Everyone. Hope to see you uh, again next Wednesday at 2 o'clock. Thanks, everybody. Thanks. Oh, yeah. Bye. Take care. It was super fun. If you find out about the Presence Summit and check it out, uh, it, we're putting a lot of time and energy into that to make online communications easier and more effective for everybody. Thank you so much. Take care, everybody. Bye.